I like using these Sonicare toothbrushes, but uh, they only last about three years before they're toast. And this is my old one, and I want to see what's inside. Maybe this bottom part twists off. Oh, it does twist. Let's try some screwdrivers in here. There. Huh. Cool. Now, how do I get the rest of this out? Ah. And the battery is right here. How do I get this out? It seems to be kind of stuck in here. Oopsie. Yeah, that battery was just soldered in. So I'm pretty sure it's the battery that fails, but I don't have any AA size lithium batteries and I can't just put a regular AA in there because lithium batteries run about four volts. So I soldered some wires to the battery terminals, ran those to the power supply, and I've got about four volts on here. Oh, it's unhappy about something because it's blinking, but it, it does buzz something. It seems to be fussy about what voltage it gets, but now if I push the button, it uh, does its vibrating thing. Now let's put the uh, toothbrush head on there. Seems to be working, although it's not uh, vibrating super hard. Okay, turn up the voltage a bit and it's now vibrating a bit harder. I think the problem is this is not in its case, so I don't have enough mass behind it. But you can definitely see the front of it shake. We're going through the power levels. Lower level. High level, I think. Off. So these things are advertised at doing about 500 strokes per second. So let's check this with a spectrum analyzer app. And we see a very strong peak right about here. Let's just touch this on there. Yeah, definitely around 250 hertz which would be uh, 500 strokes per second because each uh, back and forth would count as two strokes. And it does that little beep every 30 seconds and I captured that right there, that peak right there. So let's zoom in on that and that would be around 360 hertz. Now I've got a current meter hooked up in series and let's turn on the brush. And we're drawing 0.25 amperes. And I count that at, yeah, that is zero when it's not running. Turn it on again. And I think that's the low setting. And that's a higher setting. Okay, I think I finally managed to get into its highest settings. 0.32 amperes. Now at 0.32 amperes, and the battery says it's got uh, 680 milliamp hours. So at its highest settings, we should be able to brush for two hours straight. And when one of these toothbrushes is new, they do brush straight off with battery for quite a long time, but as they get older, not so much. Now I could repair this thing if I just replace this battery cell here, but there's clearly already been some water intrusion in here. And these things do get kind of gross over time, so I don't want to fix it. I'll just take apart this part here to see how that works. I just popped off the uh, melted over bits of plastic so I can separate the circuit board from the plastic here. There, off it comes. And now to get the motor like thingy. It's not really a motor, it just vibrates back and forth. But I want to see how it works. Holy crap, there's a lot of corrosion in here. Well, since I'm not going to put this back together anyways. This motor-like thing vibrates back and forth 250 times per second, giving uh, 500 strokes per second. And I've just noticed I can actually turn this, but uh, it likes to lock in different steps. And I think on the toothbrush, this part here, these notches engage with uh, bits of rubber right here. Which means I can't just uh, 
turn the toothbrush head around like I can now. Now I'd like to open this rusty uh, thing in here just to see what sort of arrangement of magnets is inside. Oh, I got the bottom cap off. Okay, I think I have it figured out. There's uh, five magnets here, alternating north-south, and then another five on the other half goes together like this for a total of ten poles around here. And these little rotor things have got five poles. And that means the uh, poles of this rotor are always straddling a north and a south pole on those magnets because that's where it's attracted to the most. So if I put a screwdriver in here, it tends to stick between the poles, bridging the north and the south. And that gives it a strong sort of attraction for the position between the poles. Sort of giving it a springiness and this weight on the back gives it more inertia so that between the springiness that comes from the magnets and this it's tuned to about uh, 250 hertz and this coil here basically makes the shaft a magnet and it alternates making this one more north and this one more north and if this set of poles is more north it will turn instead of straddling in between it'll turn towards the south pole because it's attracted to that and then when we reverse it's attracted to the other side which means it sort of uh, sticks to the gap in between but it vibrates a little bit from the excitation from this coil and that's what makes this whole motor like arrangement vibrate a little bit and I think if this was excited strongly enough and we didn't have anything to prevent this from turning and the bearings were a little bit better this could actually be sort of a synchronous motor. Now one more thing that's interesting about this thing is the charging. There's uh, a little coil in here and that fits on top of the charging base. And I figured I'd just probe this by making just a little coil by winding wire on there. And I'll put that on here and I've got a PC oscilloscope. And as I put this coil on the charging base you can see it uh, pick up a signal from it and that still works even with a toothbrush on. In fact, it's detecting that it's on a charging base right now. It doesn't seem to change the waveform at all. And I've got uh, two cursors on this waveform and it tells me that's about 77 kilohertz that this is putting out. Anyways, it's super interesting how these work. This is the current generation and they just rotate the head like this. The uh, first generation of these actually waved the head back and forth and the mechanism for these was entirely different and when you replace the head you actually replaced half the mechanism too.